Hi guys, it's me. Um, I just thought I would do a little bit of a um, revision on first the hygiene unit and just hone in on some of the things that you should really be going over when you do your revision. So um, as you probably know that the stuff that's in that hygiene booklet, which is the first unit you did, is in every single exam. So um, it starts off with personal hygiene. You need to be able to know um, different examples of personal hygiene things. So, you know, no body odor, clean their hair, tied back, um, inside the inside a hat, clean uniform, all those sort of things. Um, and you need to not only be able to identify personal hygiene, uh, things about personal hygiene, but also um, be able to relate the implication if they're not followed on what might occur. So if we think back to what is a food poisoning bacteria that links to personal hygiene? Staphylococcus. So staphylococcus is the food poisoning bacteria that we actually put into food. So it's from bacteria that's in our nasal passages. So when we sneeze and cough, um, that bacteria is staphylococcus and we put that onto the food. So by not following correct hand washing practices, like if we're coughing and sneezing into our hands and then we're touching food without washing our hands, we're putting that staphylococcus onto the food. So the, um, the students who can relate those cause and effect and those implications of things um, do well in exams. So always think about that. You're not just learning the content, you're learning how to, re you need to be able to actually relate it to its implications on the industry. So um, yeah, definitely we should know about hand washing. Um, there's a lot of bacterias. Um, so campylobacteria, oh gosh, there's so many of those food poisoning bacterias that um, it's the feces, feces, um, going onto food and again that's another thing that personal hygiene can affect so it's you know i know it's disgusting but um a lot of people do walk around with feces on their hands and it can just be as simple as um you know touching underwear or um, putting dirty clothes in the washing because it can be really small amounts um that come from you know farting and stuff that we can't see it on our hands but it's there okay um Here's some great, um, it's all about washing hands, so you can go over that. Um, okay, so there's that that chef you might remember, all the things that are wrong with him. He's got all the, um, you know, negative personal hygiene things on there. So that can give you a recap on what not to do, which is fantastic. Um, PP, PP &E or PPC and E or protective personal protective clothing and equipment. Um, we should all know we should all be able to identify PPC and E for the hospitality industry. Um, and it's all laid out for us there on page nine. So just go back to page nine and have a have a read of that. Um, also, this is a big one. So being out, you might want to mention something. You know, a lot of girls play with their earrings while they're cooking. They don't notice, but they twirl their earrings or they'll touch their ears. And it's just a, a nervous habit that a lot of girls do without even noticing. Um, that is something, that's one of the big reasons why jewelry is not okay. You might think, well, it's not on my hands. Why does it matter? It matters because you're going to be, you touch yourself. I mean, I know that sounds ridiculous, but girls, we do. We play with our earrings. So, um, and our hair and our nose, and we, you know, we touch areas of our face all the time. So that's one of the big reasons why it really needs to be off. Okay. This table here, which is on page 10. I definitely go over that. That gives you ex great examples. Unit two is environmental hygiene. So environmental hygiene is our rats, rodents, vermin control, all of those things. So it's about the cleanliness of the kitchen itself. Um, environmental health officers, you need to know what that is. So an environmental health officer and an EHO will come into the business and they will inspect the, the whole um, environment for environmental hygiene risks. Um, so no, no pests in the kitchen, all, um, fittings and fixtures and benches, it all needs to be up to date and maintained. It can't be all, it, there can't be cracks. There can't be mold on the walls. Um, the, if there's doors that lead to outside, you need to have fly screen traps. So that's those plastic curtain things that come down that make sure no flies go in the kitchen. Um, all chipped crockery plates, that all needs to be gone. Um, correct garbage disposal methods. So it'd be good if you, you wouldn't, you actually need to know guys, um, 
what is correct garbage disposal methods. Um, so we, when we're also talking about how to correctly dispose of certain items such as broken, cracked glass and crockery. Um, cleaning and sanitizing, you need to know the difference between cleaning and sanitizing. And I mean, you might think everyone knows that. You'd be surprised about the amount of students who actually can distinguish between the two effectively. So we should know that cleaning is about removing dirt and debris um, using a detergent based um, chemical, whereas sanitizing is actually eliminating bacteria to a safe level or completely eliminating it if we can. And that's using an actual antibacterial or sanitizing agent. So being able to um, distinguish between the two that's a question that comes up in exams all the time. Um, here we go, disposal of garbage. So you've got on page 13, disposal, appropriate handling and disposal of garbage. Um, tight fitting lids, hourly or daily removal of garbage, depending on where you are in the business and obviously using disposable garbage bags because otherwise that, um, that bin's gonna get pretty gross. Maintaining um, vermin, uh, rodent control, that's a huge one as well. So understanding that, um, you know, there can't be rats and stuff in the kitchen, but at the same time you have to be careful of the types of chemicals you're using and professional pest control is probably um, something that might need to be looked into. Hey, um, there's quite a lot of those food poisoning bacteria as well that are also caused by, by um, vermin and rodents and stuff. Okay, so here we go on page 17. There's all these different ways that we can control vermin. I would definitely recommend going over that vermin control. Sorry, I'm just um, really quickly going over this. Um, yeah, you definitely need to know what the Food Authority does, what they're all about. Um, I'd definitely look back into, um, so what are, some, what are some of the consequences of not following procedure, following legislation? You've got the name and shame website. <laughs> You would have gone over that, so there's an article in there about it, so the name and shame. Um, and then there's also the new star rating system, um, which is more of a positive incentive and a, a, it's a way of, um, it's a way of kind of saying, yeah, well done, if you're really good with environmental hygiene, as opposed to um, putting, like shaming you publicly if you're bad. So I guess it's, it's more of a positive reinforcement thing than a, and it's a proactive approach compared to name and shame, which is a reactive. So it's reactive. So yes, you're bad. Ew, yuck, rats, rodents everywhere. You're going on the name and shame website as opposed to new start rating, which pro, uh, is proactive in that it's trying to get businesses to want to be good um, because they get these um, stars and stuff and it makes their business look good. So be able to talk about the two of them is um, probably going to be a really good thing for you. I, Obviously, you need to go, you need to know about what the food authority does, the New South Wales Food Authority. Um, let's move on right along. Okay, so food hygiene. So food hygiene. This is where all your food poisoning bacteria come in. You need to know the difference between food spoilage and food poisoning. Obviously, food spoilage, if we remember. It's about um, things that we can um, detect with our senses. So we can smell it, we can see it, we can um, taste it, and um, it might be disc discoloration of color, um, discoloration of the um, or bruising um, that we might see on fruits and stuff like that. So you know you can smell off milk, you can see mold on things, um, you can taste when something's gone sour, it's got a funny flavor. So food spoilage we can we can identify with our senses and it may not necessarily cause food poisoning um, but you know it's still it's not definitely not at its optimum quality. 
This is definitely different to food poisoning where we can't see it, taste it, smell it or anything like that. It's about the bacteria that's on this food that's going to make us sick. Um, and there's three types of contaminants. So you've got chemical contaminants, physical contaminants and microbial. I'll definitely go over that and know the difference between them. So you've got your chemicals, so they're from your pesticides, etc. Physical is actual things in the food, so glass fragments, metal shavings, and then you've got your microbial. So these are things like naturally poisonous um, foods like green potatoes and um, poisonous mushrooms and stuff. You know, I haven't, you know, you haven't coughed on them or anything to make them poisonous. They are naturally poisonous. Um, okay. Allergies. So this is new in the syllabus. So it, it's something that... Um, you know, we're, we're very wary that it might come up in exams because it wasn't in the hospitality syllabus until last year. Um, so knowing what food allergy is all about, um, common allergens, common foods that cause allergies, um, symptoms of food allergy, knowing about anaphylaxis and stuff like that, I think that kind of thing might be coming up um, for you guys or, you know, in the, definitely in years to come from now on because it's a new thing. Um, okay, going back. So here we go. Talking about food poisoning. So all the symptoms. So you've got your common symptoms like diarrhea, stomach cramps, vomiting, pain, nausea, blah, blah, blah. And then you've got your more, um, your rarer kind of symptoms that goes with things like clostridium botulism. So you've got your paralysis of the nervous system and, you know, the organs shutting down and stuff like that. And that's, um, it's kind I always remember clostridium botulism and I like, I liken it to um, funnel web spider bites because that a funnel web spider also paralyzes your nervous system. So I always think clostridium botulism, that's your, that's your funnel web spider one. And that helps me remember what kind of symptoms. Um, know about the causes of food poisoning um, and different foods that are affected by different um, food poisoning bacteria. So I definitely know you should know the danger zone by now. So it's five to 60 or five to 65, depending on what you're reading. Um, symptoms here again. So you've got your common ones and then you've got your more severe ones. Miscarriage. Who remembers what ones miscarriage goes with? Listeria. Listeria is your miscarriage one. Okay, this table, definitely need to go over that. So this tells you everything you need to know about all your food poisoning bacteria. Um, sometimes it tells you to compare compare two bacteria in an exam. Other times it will literally give you the bacteria. So you need to know about them all. You need to know what cross-contamination is all about. So I definitely know a definition for that and know how it occurs with examples. Um, and you need to also know what the implications of that would be. So again, everything needs to relate back to implications, cause and effect. Um, I know I'm speeding through this. I'm sorry, guys. Cross-contamination. Um, I think we're nearly at the end now. So yeah, you got some HSC questions there. Um, definitely stay safe storage and handling of food. Um, you need to know about stock rotation, so FIFO and LILO, thermometer checks. Um, uh, where things should be stored in the fridge to be unsafe, so we know we can't store any raw things high in the fridge because, um, say, if you've got raw chicken breast defrosting high up in the fridge, the juices from that with the salmonella can then um, drip down onto ready to eat food. So your salads and stuff, things that don't get cooked. So the bacteria will just live on it and you'll consume it. So definitely know about food storage. Um, this this table is really good because it gives you storage faults and it gives you the remedies. So if you, ha you were asked about food storage, you could recollect some of these um, negative things about how or you could talk about the, the positive and the negative by going over that table. Um, okay, this video is going to end soon, so I'm going to be really quick now. So um, you only we haven't done the HACCP unit yet, but you do you may need to know a basic um, basic have a basic understanding of HACCP. So having a look at page 55 that will give you a basic understanding of what HACCP is all about. Hazard analysis, critical control point. It's all about making sure that food is safe at every single level of um, of its of getting it, cooking it, storing it 
serving it, etc., etc. So good luck, guys, and um, 